Hey guys, I just have a, a very brief update about this uh, Stele area and uh, Rostolivka area, okay? So, in in around, I, th I believe it was the first week of June, or maybe the second week of June, um, and moving on into around June 22nd. So it was, it was maybe about 20 days at most, if not like you know 10 to 14 so uh it over over that like two three week period ukraine did a few offensive actions around rostolivka where they they pushed up this tree line here and they kind of established themselves at the bottom of this, these two tree lines and they started to attack this tree line um that was all over the course of this those like 20 or whatever it is uh also they moved up, they captured um, this tree line here, and um, then they moved up to here. They captured this little thing. I, I don't know what those are called. I still I should learn what those are called. But a little rectangle thing. They captured that, and they moved up to around here. Um, at one point, they had cleared this tree line uh, that was perpendicular, and they controlled all of that, but they, they were eventually pushed out. Um, now, simultaneously, um, uh, Russia was kind of beefing up their uh, defense along this road here. And their defense is kind of passive. It's it's basically like ATGMs. You know, they, now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this is kind of a valley, okay? So Rostolivka is on, like, one side of the hill. Um and and over here, um, this uh, Krasna Polivka, this is kind of the other side of the hill, and all of this in the middle is lower ground. So, to go from Rostolivka to over here, you have to go downhill to about here, and then uphill to about here. And and right here, um, like this line, this tree line, um, this is like the peak of the hill. Okay, so you climb all the way uphill to here, and then obviously it's downhill again into Solodar. Well, kind of this. This is kind of like the top of the hill. Anyway, but but it's basically downhill again to Solodar. So so Ukraine was trying to get to the top of this hill. They got actually pretty close, and it stalled out. And we haven't had really any news at all since then. Okay, so over the past few months, really, to be honest, it's been a few months. I I continuously checked this area every time new satellite imagery came out and there were never changes and it made me very suspicious and i I've, I've thought about for a long time just marking this all as russian controlled again because it was likely that um, whatever attack ukraine did failed and then they gave up um and and why did they give up um well there's the offensive in rabatina <laughs> that's why okay so there was a point uh, there was a point in where this area could have been a primary axis of attack. And Ukraine, I believe, was pretty much preparing for that outcome. But obviously it never happens because they attack south. So um, all the preparations they made for this attack... Uh, I, I guess were abandoned. But, but anyway, this is, this is all kind of the backstory. Uh, which is to say that uh, we've, we've now um, basically reversed all of this. This is all now back in Russian control. Um, this this middle area, don't know. Um, and now, so so that, that was kind of the update that came out yesterday. Now, today, there was uh, even more. There was a Ukrainian drone attack that was geolocated to right here on this rail line. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, so... One, one thing to keep in mind is that Russia has been pushing up this rail all summer. It's been kind of a back burner issue that it's not like a super big deal. It's not like a lot of troops or anything, but, but it's been a constant pressure. And, and the way they do it is that Ukraine kind of dug in like around here. Um, and they had a really good defensive position here. And, and, and Russia's response was to shell it until those defenses didn't exist anymore. So this turned into like 
a little moonscape with no trees, no cover. And Ukraine said, you know what? We're going to fall back a little bit. And so they, they fell back to like here and Russia did the same thing there. And then they kind of fell back and then they did the same thing here. And they're just kind of falling back uh, in, in this manner. Um, so so that that's kind of uh, what's going on here. Now we see Russia has moved up to uh, this kind of this bend here. Um, they may even be further. Where I'm not, I'm not sure. So uh, we we'll keep looking out for information from here. There there really is never that much info that comes out from this general area. Um, we get more info from from Sperna, um, and also a lot of the information that we do get from here, which is not that much, but the, a lot a lot of what we do get is very difficult to geolocate and and very difficult to analyze for that for that reason. So if you can't geolocate it, obviously you can't really analyze it because <laughs> it all it, at the end of the day, an ungeolocated video is basically an FPV drone randomly exploding. And that's doesn't tell you much. Anyways, so that is kind of the update in this uh, Vesele Rastolivka area. Um, the Ukrainian attack here in June um, it, it, it had success. It was very shocking when it happened. We, I, I was not expecting this attack to happen at all. It was surprising how much success they had. And ultimately, the Ukrainian general staff decided to go in a different direction. Um, they decided to go to Rabatina. And they apparently abandoned all of these attacks. And in the subs subsequent months... And, and, and I'm not saying that Russia moved up and took all this land yesterday. That's no. We're talking over about, you know, since June, they took these positions back. Okay, so it's just that we didn't have the information to prove it. All we had was a lack of fighting, a very distinct lack of fighting. It's possible that Russia retook these positions in July. Okay, so don't don't take this as... This is something that just happened. It's just that, you know, it's just been confirmed. Okay, so uh, there we go. Um, I'll see you later. Goodbye.